Well, I wanted to uh, sort of just just grab you for a couple of minutes, James, just to talk about um, your experience because I think it, it's quite it's quite unique. Um, and you know, we've been uh, working with students for over a decade now, helping them secure their their career in finance. Um, now, there has been one other. So you're the only second uh, ex professional footballer to move into to finance, and that's um. Well, quite a, a unique journey. So talk to me a bit about it. Um, give, can you give me a bit of background about um, your footballing career and then why and how you wanted to move in finance? Yeah, so um, I mean, I've, I've balanced football and academia sort of throughout my career in both. Um, and really in terms of finance, when I took economics for A-level during college, sort of my first feelings towards the markets and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I think having the background with my dad having sort of worked in finance as well, he's had roles within the market. So he had a kind of better understanding of it. And I suppose was able to guide me once I said that this is something mm -hmm. I'd like to balance alongside football. Um, so, I mean, in terms of going back to the start, really, it was, you know, I had that faced that kind of decision that a lot of young pros have to make at 16 in terms of do you sort of leave school and go full time with football um, or do you continue your education? There wasn't really an opportunity, it seemed, to do both. Yet I spoke to, you know, my parents were really helpful with the whole idea um, and helped me approach the football club and the college in order to kind of recognise that both parties could benefit from someone who was able to balance both. And, you know, the club thankfully allowed me to take some time away to go to college to do the exams to meet my tutors and stuff like that and likewise the college allowed me to mm. sit my exams almost as a sort of external student but come back to the college to take my exams there and then kind of worked worked through both um and then having achieved a levels um i went and played football then for the next four or five years before returning to university and joined loughborough university and took a business economics and finance degree and continue to do the same really. I, I was still, I went over to the uh, Premier League in Ireland and was playing over there whilst at Loughborough University. So similar to my A-levels really, I was used to spending a lot of time on my own, studying after training each day and, and kind of completing both. And then uh, graduated this summer and obviously enrolled on the Amplify training. Yeah. For internship. What a story, fantastic story. I'm definitely one of, of sort of juggling and, and multitasking, but um, I think it's what I like about your story. It's a bit of realism as well. Um, during the program, you said to me, you know, the thing about professional football is, you know, it really is just a very, very top echelon that 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 that, that make it uh, a full time career that people read about. And actually, then for still super talented players, um, it's just a sensible thing to to have other options. And and you were always interested in finance as well. So I'm yeah, I mean, as I sort of briefly touched on, I think that probably comes from my background from my dad. Yeah. He, uh, he was involved in in finance and so I suppose when I thought started thinking about careers to balance alongside football and you know where my academics could take me um, you know he was helpful at pointing me towards you, know, you might like this and 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 then really the the catalyst for me was the Amplify summer internship I mean the uh, I took part in a sales and trading sort of simulation insight day at Loughborough University um, and I met Eddie there and, and he talked about the sort of the summer internship and I, and I looked into it and thought, well, you know, this would be a fantastic investment for my future in terms of, if nothing else, just figuring out, you know, what I liked, what I didn't mm -hmm. like and kind of give me an idea. And actually it, it almost sounds silly, but I think the, one of the best things about it is um, I learned things that I didn't know I needed to learn. And, right. um, you know, I, I would have had no idea what, you know, exactly make someone you know successful starting off applying for jobs and looking for a role in finance had I not enrolled on that internship and I think that, yeah. that definitely the catalyst for understanding exactly uh, you know where I wanted to go. Uh, well so you didn't know what you didn't need to know was the, the well exactly that, that 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 was the that was probably the biggest takeaway from the internship and and I think it sort of I definitely I know you know when we'd spoken you said one of the things that you notice is sort of people leaving the Amplify course are better positioned than other candidates going into interviews and, and those processes and um, it's one thing kind of 
hearing it from the Amplify team and thinking, right, you know, I'm, I am I am learning bits here. But then when you do start the process, um, I did feel like actually I was more comfortable approaching questions. I was able to actually understand things I was reading easier and follow the markets easier because I had that sort of experience and was taught the things that yeah. <laughs> now I needed to know. So. Now, it's and one of those things that actually a lot of students don't know is about the role that you've gone on to secure, which is super, I'm really, really happy for you, by the way. Because yeah. um, obviously we've got connections there with Morgan Stanley and specifically, you know, the co-head of the whole prime brokerage division for EMEA, um, who actually now, that was Will Smith. Did he speak, were you in the program that he spoke at? Were you in that intake where he? Yes, I was, yeah. Oh, yes, wow. that was definitely, um, uh, you know, I traced back the kind of, the sort of affiliation I've built up with Morgan Stanley through this process from that moment, really. And actually, uh, following that, you know, as I did my application for Prime Brokerage, I connected with him on LinkedIn and kind of gave him a few updates on my application. And, you know, he wished me the best and then congratulated me once I secured the role. So it's fantastic. But I think that, um, you know, initial webinar, very, very fortunate to, to speak to him. And he was able to provide that kind of overview of the whole prime brokerage division and, and explain how central it was to Morgan Stanley and, and how they kind of the way he described it was pulling together all the different aspects of the firm to meet the client's needs and I think that was the first time I really considered the role liked the idea liked what he had to say and particularly started me on the path of building this affiliation with mm. Morgan Stanley and I think what's in, interesting to touch on is he spoke a lot about the culture and the environment. And I know that when you're doing interviews and when you're speaking to people with firms, it can seem a bit cliche to ask those questions and hear their feedback. But what was interesting is someone else on the course asked him the question about why he'd spent so long at Morgan Stanley. And he mentioned that. And then the experience that I've had with everyone that I've spoken through to through the process. So, you know, initially you put me in touch with uh, Joseph Jackson, the, mm. another guy who was on Amplify and now mm. on the asset backed securities desk at Morgan Stanley. He was so accommodating and really, really helpful in terms of um, guiding me towards, you know, my application. And then, you know, from there, I was quite proactive in terms of speaking with other people. So um, you know, Charlie Amesbury in, in particular is in prime brokerage and he's an ex professional rugby player and and you know again I had a conversation with him so that kind of relationship that I've built with other people you know I'm not going to sit here name dropping everyone that yeah. I've spoken to but but the, the point is that that initial statement that Will Smith made about why he stayed at the firm for so long actually has really started to resonate with me as I've gone through the application process and everybody I've spoken to whether it's people mm -hmm. I've reached out to to help me or whether it's people that have interviewed me I've got that feeling from all of them and it just means that I'm excited to get into the building yeah. to meet these people face to face well it's fantastic to hear and you know and I think also part of that with bringing in you know the co-head of prime brokerage into the summer program mm. you can actually deeply get to find out what is prime brokerage all about how as you describe it bringing in the different parts of the firm mm. in order you know right at the peak i think one of the things he was saying is you know serving the client no matter what that's it that's the the, the priority delivering that that ultra uh, if you like unique and tailored fit um product yeah. um i think for that to, to run through i think lots of students out there don't really understand prime brokerage and the difference between that and trading or market making or sales trading or, yeah. or broking. Um, and so I think, you know, you, you definitely had an advantage having that insight and I'm definitely, over yeah. the moon that you're able to convert on that advantage. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously I'm delighted. Um, really, really excited. Um, but oh God, those... here's another one. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going an interview. Can you go and close the door and I'll be one minute. Okay. This is uh, the perils of working from home. No, no, no. You have to go. It is one of the penalties of working from home. And 2020 is uh, <laughs> definitely a strange year um, for that. And actually, on that point, then, um, how did you find it? Because obviously, you know, how did you find the remote aspect of it? How did you find it being, you know, uh, connected but but not physically there um yeah well you know it's, it's, it's interesting actually um particularly the final stage of the morgan stanley application process is the assessment center and um you know you're uh, 
was given a case study and had to present and then had three interviews throughout the day. And initially I was thinking, God, it's a real shame that I'm not getting to go into the office and meet people face to face. And, you know, having heard sort of Joseph ex experience of going into the assessment center and actually kind of building a rapport with people. I thought, oh, that's a shame. I'm mm. quite an outgoing person. I like meeting people, like talking with people. And I thought um, it would be a disadvantage being remote, but actually, when I was then asked to give feedback at the end of the assessment center, um, the feedback I gave was really, really positive. I think that even though it is remote, this kind of face-to-face -face interaction actually meant that I did feel I was still able to kind of build that rapport and, and understand how the interviewer was feeling and sort of portray myself in the way that I wanted to be portrayed. Right. So it was, I thought it was going to be a disadvantage, but actually, you know, it was, it was fine. Although, um, you know, I, if you said to me, right, when I start the role next year, I'm going to have to do it from home, then I'd be yeah, definitely, definitely to, disappointed uh, about that. And I think for, for next year with the summer program and, and, and going forward, so you'll have to come in as well. We're going to be having periodic like day meetups. Um, and I'd love you to come along to the next one in 2021, where all the candidates on the current summer analyst program uh, will be invited to come to London for the day, come into the office, connect with each other, connect with people like you, It'd be great if you could share some of your advice with them as well um and then continue on the on, on the program online i think there's a good hybrid to, to be had there for those that can come to london fantastic but then it doesn't disadvantage those who you know coming to london for, for all of that time would be super expensive yeah well in terms of the, the amplify course over the summer it you know worked very smoothly considering it was all mm. virtual and i think that my sort of cohort was the f was it the first course of the summer i think you were the first one yeah 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 so um you know there wasn't really many teething problems as such. <laughs> that, um, proved there, there, there was you just couldn't see them we were like ducks oh, right. okay yeah <laughs> panic in the background but uh so each each morning before the morning reports it was just exactly. mayhem yeah but uh no i mean from my point of view it seemed to run very smoothly um and i think the the biggest thing for me now having kind of secured the role and i'm so excited to start i mean I, you know i was half tempted to just go up to london and, and look at the offices <laughs> where i'm going to be and i mean it might be a bit sad just standing outside but just you know right. but um but the i mean particularly with my background you know slightly more unique i feel very passionate about giving other people those opportunities and you know, I, I kind of briefly put you in touch with Jordan Unsworth at the PFA um, and the, so the PFA, the Professional Footballers Association, the union are really, really helpful. I mean, the support that they've given me and I know other people through a transition from full-time professional football into you know, another career um, for me being finance and both, you know, the support in terms of contact with them and financial support in order to give me the opportunity mm -hmm. to enroll on the Amplifier course. I feel extremely grateful for that, but also um, now that I have the chance to kind of look back and reflect on my journey, I think that it was more difficult than it should have been and there weren't the opportunities there for you know, young players to balance both education and football. And so you know, I've actually been speaking with the PFA in, into 2021, um, you know, I've volunteered sort of my services to help them and, and come up with some ideas and in, in how to uh, sort of approach this and Jordan's been great so we've been speaking and we're gonna you know hopefully host some webinars and stuff like that next year and I would like to kind of pass on that information to young boys young players boys and girls in my position and almost uh, tell them you know what they don't know what I was yeah. saying Learning, oh, absolutely. Learning things. No, and, and I mean, you know, so for example, with, with Morgan Stanley in particular, I know that the other co-head of European Prime Brokerage with Will Smith is ex-military. And so he has that strong belief in terms of uh, transferable skills from military personnel and sports personnel. And then and you see with Charlie Amesbury and Joe mm -hmm. Jackson who've gone on to be successful within the firm, that there are these skills. And although people had said to me, oh, there, there is lots of transferable skills. It's only once you start going through the application process, you realize actually, mm -hmm. you know, having been in these environments and maybe difficult situations that um, I was more prepared. And so I'd love to go back and, and tell you know, other young players, actually, you probably have no idea, but you know, here's 
opportunities where mm. people actively seek you know those with a unique background or a professional background and and you know here's my route here's my route through the amplify uh, summer internship and and that's how i learned and, yeah. and stuff like that and i would well, love would, to would be would be super happy back. obviously to to continue to help and i did uh, say to jordan would be back in touch because we're mm. i mean definitely want to sponsor some events finance accelerator yeah, yeah, events. No, he, he said the same to me on the phone last not week not where we he, can he, 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 um and I think I think you're right. Uh, what you said there is it was harder than it should have been. And it's not just you coming from a professional sport background that you know finds that timing difficult. We actually have a lot of students join us who are in their second year, who are in their third year, and they've missed out on the timing of spring week then in turn, you know, that they they haven't been able to secure that first internship. And then they feel like they're out the loop a bit because there's such a narrow window. Yeah. Um, and some of our best success stories, which we'll be sharing, are those students who are in their second year, third year or postgrads who we've been able to connect with with roles such as yourself. Yeah, um, it's interesting having kind of, you know, one of the things that, that I've taken on board, particularly again from Amplify is to um, engage more with LinkedIn and network and stuff. Like that. And and it's interesting to see different people's opinions. I've read some people saying oh why are students so obsessed with spring weeks and internships and that kind of stuff and actually having now gone through the process i i think that's uh, you know a terrible thing to say because actually um you know having graduated this summer i found that i wasn't eligible for a lot of roles if i had wanted to apply for them because I hadn't done their internship program or their spring week program um you know fortunately you know, I had my site set some set on Morgan Stanley and was focusing on that application process. But, um, you know, I did look at other areas. I wasn't naive in terms of, you know, solely all my eggs in one basket. But the what I did realize is that, you know, the majority of firms kind of recruit graduates directly from their internships. And if you are not an internship, you're massively disadvantaged. Yeah. You know, they might not even consider your graduate application because they're just going to hire from their internship so yeah as you said you know people that have gone on through amplify in their second and third years to then secure roles is actually you know something they deserve a bit more credit for yeah. because it, it really is for, from my understanding you know following that traditional route of spring week maybe they're less important but even so spring weeks then the internship and the graduate scheme and and to be quite frank i didn't even i'd never even heard of a spring week until i joined the amplify course because right. I was solely just balancing football and education. I just yeah. wanted to drive and get right, get my degree as good as it can possibly be, you know, play football at the highest level I can and continue to play well. And the outcome will take care of itself. But actually, um, it would have been nice along the way to go, I need to you know, know a little bit more about this. And maybe a spring week or an internship would have helped my cause. But, you know, all, all's well that ends well. Yeah, right? absolutely. I mean, look, you, you, you made it work in the end. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, it was definitely a, such a pleasure having you on the Amplify program. And right from the start, when I knew you came from a professional sport background, I was obviously very interested in the psychology in terms of the resilience, in terms of the focus and the discipline. And it's those types of transferable attributes that um, the financial industry do desire, um, but it doesn't just happen. You know, you've got to, you've got to make it happen yourself. So all of those applications that you sent out, um, interview practice questions, you know, I could, I could see your work rate was, was through the roof, uh, trying to make sure you secured that role. So it's a hu huge kudos to you, um, and, and just fully deserved. So, so we're, we're over the moon. Oh, no, well, I, you know, I really appreciate it. And it's nice because, um, you know, other people that are on the course, like Renata, who's sort of helping amplify a bit it was amazing after i spoke to you she then reached out to congratulate me and so it did feel that yeah the amplify team were very yeah. pleased and proud and and it's great because you know i'm delighted to be able to say you know i'm a sort of amplify graduate who's gone on and secured a role because initially when looking at the idea of joining the summer internship i read some of the stories of people that have gone on to secure roles um, and so I feel very proud of the fact that I can join that list. And I think that the thought that yourself and Anthony and Eddie and Piers and everyone who was so helpful through the internship 
can kind of feel proud of the fact that here's another one that we've secured a role for it makes me feel good inside as well it's nice to yeah it, makes, it makes our day as soon as i got your whatsapp uh, photos sent to everybody share to everybody and in a big email as well and actually that's you know i'd say once a week i'm doing that with a great new success story and it's such that's a great. fantastic thing for us to, to remind the whole team this is why we do it um, yeah it feels good well, you know that that's good if, if it's feel good all around then feels good yeah, around. exactly i mean the main thing you have to hope now is that we don't actually go out into the industry and mess it all up for everyone oh, exactly so yeah don't do that don't do that please um but but listen thank you so much for for joining this chat and and giving the the the, the feedback um hugely hugely use, use no I'm delighted to as i said you know if i can help out in any other way going forward please let me know i'd be be delighted to